he get away, Tim? Okay, cool. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Everyone's yes. mute. Everyone's <laughs> muted, so I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, sound is good, Tim. Yeah. Okay. Um, according to, uh, again, Fox News, day 52 of lockdown. <clears throat> I'm up for growing a mullet. Anybody else going to join me? Probably not, huh? Don't make how... me post that old photo of you, Tim. I, 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 may have, I could do a mullet. But I, don't, I just, it's been two months or three months since I've had a haircut. Okay, <clears throat> today I want to play around a little bit. Today is going to be kind of a fun deal. I want to show th three different types of uh, um, technology to, I don't say entertain your students, but but to um, maybe get, uh, deliver a, a distance learning type of a message. Um, I'm going to be a little bit proprietary at the beginning here and, and show about a 10 minute thing on iMovie, which is an Apple product. Um, a lot of you all use Macintosh stuff and, and maybe this will be a help just to show you how quickly you can throw a clip into there and, and, and personalize it, make it look a little bit more um, finished, um, put, uh, um, put some titles and some other things in there. Then I'm going to have a, a Dan Beeson um, do a, a 10 or 15 minute deal on that OBS, which is a, a open source broadcasting deal that he uses in his classroom. And then at the end, I want to wrap up with a five, probably five minute deal on the uh, kind of a cool little feature or a um, program that I found that, that messes with PowerPoints and, and uh, which everyone's kind of familiar with dealing with. So I want to show you a, I'll show you that here at the very end. So um, <clears throat> for right now, iMovie. Can you guys see my little toolbar down there and I'm kind of dancing on the star? That's the, the logo for iMovie. I'm going to pull it up. Yeah. And uh, um, wait forever for it to load. No, I'm just kidding. So this is kind of what it looks like in its blank form. Um, it, boy, this thing is so slow when people get on here. Anyway. Um, First thing we need to do is this big arrow is import media. And I'm going to just show you. I've got a little clip kind of sitting on my desktop. I'm going to drag it in, drop it into iMovie, full screen to where we can kind of see the whole thing. Okay. So you've got a little bit of, I guess, all these little panels to work with. Over here on the right is going to be eventually where we see that we get to preview the video. Down here on the bottom is what I call the the, the, the play deck or the slide deck. I, you drag your media down into there and manipulate it down in, into that bottom deal. So let me grab this video. You just, just highlight on it, bring it down, drop it in there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go over here and show this little settings cursor by the window. It'll expand that video all the way out or condense it, depending on how, how much you want to look at or work with. Um, I'm going to kind of leave it about there. If I drive my cursor down here, it actually kind of plays the video for me in fast form. Okay, what I want to do first is I've already dropped that in there. I want to, <clears throat> this, this is a, I don't know, just a video that uh, I found years ago out on the internet. It is an advertisement, um, but I'm going to show you how I would crop it. So let me show you real quick. This is how long it is. It goes way out to here. I'm going to stop it at this this first fade to black. And so I can drop my cursor there, kind of click on it. And I found if, if you move your cursor, it'll follow you. So I'm going to kind of lock it down and go straight up. I'm going to go over to the toolbar, go to modify. And this is the, the hard way. There's short key, shortcut keys, but I'm going to kind of show you the hard way just to, so that we can all see what's going on. Um, go down to split clip and I can kick it and it'll actually cut that clip right there into two pieces. Now I can um, click on the clip, the part that I want to get rid of and just hit my delete key and it's gone. So now all I'm working with is this part of the video. So I've trimmed it down to the size that I want. Okay. Um, I'm going to add a title to it. So up, up here at the top, we have, we have audio we can add, we can add, we have titles. I'm going to go to the titles. I'm going to go down here and show you they've got uh, just a whole range of, of titles that you can put before or into the video. And I'll show you both real quick. What I like about it is you can go down and actually um, go to the clip. 
and highlight on it, move your cursor and see what it's going to look like. So let's grab a Star Wars one, drag it down here and throw it at the very front of this video. Whoops, I'm on top here. I need to get in. I know what I need to do. I got to use. I meant to tell you, it's it's probably I'm using my mouse pad and it's a little clunkier. If you actually have a mouse, it works. It, it, it makes it a lot easier to control. So right now, this this particular beginning is a is 10 seconds long. I don't want a 10 second long one so I can kind of shrink it all down. And the little timer at the top tells you I probably want a maybe a two two second deal. OK, now to, to mess with the verbiage in it, you, you kind of highlight it, go over here and click on it. Whoops, let me get rid of all this stuff. Hear my dogs today? We're dog sitting. So I'm going to change this and say, put what I want in there. Whoops, get rid of all this other stuff. Wow. Bunch of crap in there. Okay, so I changed it to say just wait for it. <clears throat> now I can um, I'm going to I can also put a I guess a, a title on top here too. So I'm going to go down to right around here. I'm going to go up here and grab a uh, I think I'm going to do the pixie dust one. It looks like that. So I'm going to just click on it. Uh, I left click and drag it and I'm going to drop it down. I've already watched it, so I kind of know where I want to put it and I'm going to set it on top like that and then then go up here and I can kind of double click on it and modify it. Whoops, I got to highlight it first. Tim, this is a Mac version, correct? Yes, that's why I said it. it's a little bit maybe um, slanted toward Macintosh users today, but I I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of you, a lot of people out there that have it and, and would be worth seeing. Marshall okay. was asking in the chat what happens when it sits over the top like you had it at first. I'll show you. So I've, I put one in front of the video and I'm putting one on top of the video and you can kind of see right now that it puts it right into the video. Fair enough. So now I'm going to go to the very end and I'm going to show you too that this video has audio. You see this little bar at the bottom here? It's it can it came it comes with sound. You can detach it, get rid of it. You can drop the volume in it right here to nothing. I'm going to leave it on because I want you to hear it and then you can actually add audio to it. So I'm going to go up to audio, click on that. I'm going to it, it gives you you can add music to it. You can go to YouTube video or YouTube audio and, and grab open source stuff. It's got sound effects that it comes with or <clears throat> in this case, I want to just. I'm just going to go <clears throat> use the shortcut and hit the if I go over here and hit this microphone button, it'll change it to record. And you see the little sound bar. I mean, the little kind of like the graph is showing how loud I'm talking. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to right now where my cursor is, is where it's going to start. I'm going to hit record. It's going to do a three count and I'm going to add something. That's right. You can't fix stupid. And then I just hit the button again and it stops it. Change it back to Mike. I'm actually going to want to I actually kind of want to drag this to the end. So I've made it there. Go to the top of the bar. Whoops. And drag it all the way down to here. OK, so now I've added my sound on top of their sound. I've added a title. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. And I'm going to do this real quick because I think if I take my headphones off, you guys can you still hear me, Jimmy? Yes. OK, so this is kind of what it looks like for the little bit of time I spent on it. Can you hear it? Yes. yes. Whoa, that's not good. Oh, I don't need this. I'm already late. 
somebody will come. Anybody up there? Do you have a phone? No. Sorry. Somebody! Hello? There are two people stuck on an escalator and we need help. Now, would somebody please do something? Oh, my title didn't skip. <laughs> I don't believe this. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> well, there's nothing else left to do. That's right. You can't fix stupid. So the only thing that happened there that was wrong was my title didn't stick. So um, not a big, you can go back and type it in again. <clears throat> and then you can just save it as an MP, MP4 to your computer. So pretty easy to manipulate. So you could take clips of stuff you do in your classroom and turn it into, you know, a project. Um, add your own voice to it. You could, there, there's just a lot you can do to it. I don't need to tell you probably everything that you need to do. So um, hopefully that helped a little bit for the Apple guys. I'm going to quit sharing is a, uh, Dan Beeson there. I'm going to kind of let him take over for a minute and show us the OBS deal, and then I'll come back and show you something on PowerPoint. He's on. Okay. I'm going to quit sharing. And I put I'm the on. That was quite in, a, uh, 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 while Dan's getting uh, tooled up, I put the sign in uh, for a certificate of, certificate of attendance in the uh, in the chat. Cool. So if you can sign in or not. Thanks, sir. Okay, so, um, and that was uh, quite a lead in there. I wasn't, you caught me quick there. So, um, but we're good to go. I told you I was gonna get, take 10 and I took 13, yeah, so. We are good, <laughs> yeah. So um, now the question is, um, can I share my screen? So um, let's see right now. Um, so what, what ends up happening uh, with any any of this stuff that you're, there we go, share my entire screen. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. Um, can you see my uh, screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so what I have found ends up happening with uh, any of this stuff, when you're trying to do it live, um, computers crash, things get buggy, we deal with latency and all that kind of stuff. And that's why sometimes doing this live um, is difficult. So what I was trying to do uh, for my uh, particular situation was I was trying to use a tool uh, that is part of Canvas, and that's what we use on campus. Um, it's called Panopto. And right now um, you're seeing what I had to end up doing as a solution because Panopto wasn't working for me. Panopto didn't have any green screen options. It had no flexibility as far as what I could show. It was designed to be a lecture capture tool and that was it. And I needed a little bit more flexibility so that I could make some recordings and I could have the option to decide what I was gonna record and how like I wanted my face to appear. Did I not want my face to appear, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I ended up finding this one, but there are definite options. This is called OBS. It's freeware, it's out there on the internet. I don't know what OBS stands for, I'm sure um, it's something spectacular. But I know that there are alternatives to this. Um, again, Rick uh, alluded to this last week. It's just kind of a, it's a way to capture various things from your computer at the same time and you get full control over what you capture. So while it's on the screen, you can record um, this screen and you can make a recording of yourself. You can make a recording of a scan tool. You can make a recording of a PowerPoint with your face on the left side or on the right side. You can do whatever you want. It's full flexibility. The issue is it's full flexibility. So it gives you <laughs> <laughs> so many options, it's overwhelming. Um, and what I did was I did not go into it because I thought the tool was cool. So I downloaded it. It wasn't like that. 
I had a problem that I was trying to solve. So this solved my problem of not having the flexibility. It's not something I was going after. So um, right now, my poor old laptop is streaming, team viewing. It's doing a million different things. I'm asking a lot of it. Yeah. So um, I need to verify right now. Are you seeing myself in the corner um, with a blue yes. shirt on? Yep. Okay. Um, and that what's happening is I'm using two cameras. Uh, one is projecting for OBS because while I'm live streaming, it uses a different camera. It uses my, my laptop camera. But back to the tool, what this tool, all this tool is doing is just taking different feeds that I give it. So right now over here, you'll see the word scenes. And down here, what we're currently looking at is my Logitech 2 camera, which is what my face is, and a team viewer hooked up right now to a Snap-on lab scope that I have running on an injector waveform. So I can go over to the Snap-on scan tool lab scope, and let's say I'm teaching trigger. I can do that, and I think what you can see right now is what happens to an injector waveform when there's no trigger. Yep. Okay? Perfect, yeah. And then when I pull this down, now you can say, okay, there's an obvious control of trigger. But then you might say something like, well, how does that work with the Pico scope? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a quick look at another scene that I already have set up. So this is the Pico scope running with my face still on it. I just changed to a different set of inputs. And over here, you can see the inputs that I'm using. I'm using my Logitech webcam and I'm inputting from my second screen. So everything that's on my second computer screen, you can see, and I'm overlaid on top of it. Now I can be you, around if I need to be, if yeah, I'm in the you way. You yourself, yeah, perfect. Yep. Now, the point to this is what you're seeing here in this box, if I come over and hit the record button, it is recording everything you see in this box. So whatever happens inside of this box is being recorded. So when I change it like to this, you are, it is recording what is in the box. And when I change it to this, it is recording what is in the box. So it just that, continues recording what's in the box. Does that include you, you talking, Dan? Uh, yeah, so I, got, I can choose my audio input and it, and it shows, so everything that you see in the box is being recorded. If my face is on there, it is being recorded. If my face is not on there, then it is not being recorded. The only thing that it is not showing, it's not recording this red square around yeah. it. That's, yeah, that's right. my handle, so I can do what I want. Okay. Now you'll notice like right now we're looking at a Pico scope. So I can come over to my second screen and maybe I can control my Pico scope by showing what trigger does um, to a Pico pattern, although my, my Pico is not working correctly right now, which is because I've got too much going on. However, I can show it, like I say, on a Pico scope. Now, let's say that I didn't want them to see all of this garbage down here on the bottom of my second screen. I can actually crop that out. So now all they're seeing is this with me. So if I hit, if I had been recording this whole time, I would have had this set up ahead of time. This is all in the ahead of time setup so that you can transition smoothly from one to the next and it just continues recording. And I can even do something like add a second camera in there. So I see that this is backwards right now um, because everything crashed right when I tried to get this going. But you can see that I've added another camera called my IV cam and it's um, crashed of course because we've got I've got too much <laughs> going on. But um, right here you can see a multimeter and an injector and we're talking about an injector waveform. So maybe I would have this hooked up to the car and then I could say, okay, now let's go back to just the pattern. And now how did we actually hook it up? I could flip back and forth um, and show all those different things. And remember this Pico right now is just showing what's on my second screen. So if I wanted to, I could open up an Electude simulator on my second screen. Wow. And um, now I've got this lab scope running and I could come over here and I could say, well, what happens when I take the trigger off 
of the injector. I could demonstrate it on the Electude screen because whatever's on my second screen is what's being pushed up to OBS because I have it set up to take the second screen with my Logitech camera. And then if I wanted to go back and add that third camera input, I could click this and now there's my injector again. So what that kind of so things cool. can you add to this? You just come over here to sources and this shows you everything you can throw onto this. You could put an image, you could put a, dis a display capture, you could do video capture from things like cameras. All your cameras will be listed there. I could, this is how I'm doing the team viewer. I'm doing a window capture where all I'm capturing is the window of the team viewer. So it doesn't matter if the team viewer is on the first screen or the second screen, or if it's minimized, all it's doing is capturing the window of the team viewer. And that's all done by adding sources to this. Again, I don't think OBS is the only tool for this. I think there are other tools. I know there are other tools that do this, but this is the tool I'm using. And then when it's all done, I just hit stop recording it puts it into uh, an MP4 file, and then I upload it to YouTube. The Perfect. URL to download Go ahead. the OBS was put in the chat window too, by the way, for anybody who doesn't have it. Awesome. And it's and it, open, open broadcast software is what it stands for. Gotcha. And it's cross-platform, so it'll work on any uh, platform. Again, I don't think this is the only tool. I think there are other tools that will do this. But what my problem was, I was trying to... Um, solve my issue of showing things to my students and a record, make a recording with my face and with various inputs and the tools that we were given by the school were inadequate. And um, unfortunately, depending on how the student viewed the videos I were making, it would look different, whether it was on, on a phone or on a computer. And with YouTube, I save all my files, I push them to YouTube so it's consistent across all platforms. I think that's as important as when we're pushing a document out to a student that we created in Word, we save it as a PDF if we can, so that it looks the same on all platforms. And that's that's what my whole angle to this was. Somebody asked, is that free? And are there certain like pay, pay up levels for it? Uh, it is free, it is open source. Um, and I don't think there's any pay up levels. It's It came out of a Linux background where all the nerds get together and do stuff because it's cool. Um, and they don't, it's an old, it's one that's been around for a long time. So it's constantly being tweaked and worked on. Um, and as far as I know, there's no pay, there's no ads, there's no way to pay. I have never paid. It works perfectly for me. The only struggle I have is it's got way too many features, way too yeah. many. Yeah. And that, so I, I, what I've done is I've said, this is what I need to do. So I'm only messing with that. I'm messing with only the green screen. This thing can make me turn purple, can flip me upside down. I don't need any of that. So all I needed to do is green screen my background out and let me control my face. And so that's all the functions I've used. Man, that was perfect. Okay. I mean, and in reality, you know, as we move from classroom to distance, this is the kind of stuff that uh, um, well, it's like iMovie. I, I was, it took me a long, long, long time to kind of figure out how to do just what I showed you in less than 10 minutes today. Uh, once you do it, then it's just like pulling up a scan tool and, and using it, you know, you're, you're used to it or, or opening up a computer and you doing a Word document. Um, the more you use it, the repetitiveness of it, um, the better you're going to be. So, and, and I, I'm going to just continue to say that this is where a lot of what we're going to be doing in our jobs is going. So, Okay, well, let's do something here real quick. You see my screen? Thank you, Dan, by the way. I mean, I really appreciate you doing that. That was great. I had looked at it when you mentioned it the other day and knew there was no way I was going to get up to speed enough to be able to do what you just did. So thank you. Of course. Um, okay, let's go to our old friend PowerPoint. You can see the PowerPoint. This is the one that, that I've been using this week for the uh, engine bench. Um, we're used to building PowerPoints. We're used to using the note section down here. So I've got um, notes in each after, uh, I guess, under each slide. Pretty comfortable with using that, right? How about if we wanted to turn this into a video real quick without just a, a ton of um, technology? <clears throat> well, there's a um, website 
now and it's free it's not going to be free forever but I don't, I don't know what it'll run I and mean, they're in their beta version right now it's called video puppet and you actually just create an account it's very easy to create an account um, not very intrusive or anything like that um, once you do you can take a powerpoint and drop it right into this thing and um Make it, and it will make you make it into a. Uh, I'm not going to sign up. Forget it. I already did it. it. It will make it into a video. So let me show you real quick. This is that PowerPoint, and I'm going to take my ones off so you can hear again. This is the same PowerPoint that I started showing you here, and and listen. An instructor-led lesson on map sensors. Can you hear that? 2014 Hyundai Accent yeah. 4 FD engine manual transmission. What is a manifold absolute pressure sensor? A fuel and ignition timing management input sensor that senses engine load and generates a signal proportional to manifold vacuum. Ignition timing and fuel trims are adjusted accordingly. Note, some vehicles have a barometric pressure baro, sensor that is integral to the mass airflow MAF sensor and do not have a MAP sensor. Other vehicles have a MAF baro and a redundant MAP sensor where the MAP sensor finds so you kind of get it. I didn't do anything other than drop it into their program. It put the music, it does the timing, it does the transitions, it put the voice. You, you can choose from men and women, different accents. I've got a British accent. Or check this one out. An instructor le bless on map sensors. 2014 Hyundai Accent G4 FD engine manual transmission. What is a manifold absolute pressure sensor? A fuel and ignition timing management input sensor that senses engine load and generates a signal proportional to manifold vacuum. Ignition timing and fuel trims are adjusted accordingly. No. I think that'd be kind of handy, personally. <laughs> so, so uh, Tim, someone asked, is the narration whatever was typed in in the notes section? Definitely. Mm. Okay. Yep. So... Oh. So the only thing, you know, is it's it's reading your text. So when you type something in, you have to do it in, in somewhat correct sentence structure, put a period after things. I put the uh, and symbol in there. And when I downloaded it the first time, it came back and picked up and said, I can't do that. You have to go in and write the word and. So you'll, you'll get used to what it, the perimeters, but what you want to say, you know, with that slide is um, what you type in there and it becomes the movie. Um, as far as posting onto a, you know, an LMS or, a, or YouTube or wherever you want to go with it for your students to perhaps have some what I call first contact with content before they come to class, um, be great. You know, I mean, you're, you're giving them a little bit of a lesson. They like watching a video. It's a PowerPoint and a video all together and um, you can go from there. So I just want to show you that to you. I thought it was kind of fun. It's pretty simple. And like I said, I think we're all pretty much used to, to PowerPoints and um, just the thought that there's a tool out there that would help you maybe make a, you know, quickly make a video and and, and uh, not be so complicated as iMovie or perhaps uh, OBS. So that was kind of our goal today was to bring you some resources on stuff like that. So we're, I have a shameless plug to make for next yep. week before you before you drop the recording, Jimmy, since we're right there. I'm going to share my screen and then show a short PowerPoint uh, that's a teaser for the class that uh, Dick Krieger and Al Centini are doing next week. So let me present that. And so you can see that. And it's going to be about oscilloscopes uh, and uses as a teaching tool in the in your program. So these two guys uh, you know they they play off each other very well and uh, they've done this class and uh, you know i learn something every time i see it um did i go through yep okay and there you are i think that's all the slides they'll probably have some um, resources that will be available to you as well. No, not probably. They will have resources that will be available to you as well. So that's uh, starting next week. Uh, same time, same place. And I will stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to stop the recording.